In this video, we're going to look at one of my personal favorite new features in Rebel 3 and how it's very different from the way that things worked in Rebel 2. So before we get too far in it, I do want to point out that I've switched over here to the marker tool and I'm going to be using the chisel brush that comes with Rebel 3. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the size up probably somewhere around 88 so that we can really see this. And I want to point out to you that the brush ghost that we're having here that's showing the size of the mark that we're going to be making also has a line in the center of that. And you can see that as I'm moving around, that line is changing the direction. And this is controlling the angle of this brush. So the idea here is that the movements of my stylus are going to be determining the way that things are working within this particular type of brush where it's long and thin like this. Now we're gonna understand this a little bit better if we come over here to the brush creator and we see that the shape is indeed this long, thin shape. This is the type of shape that we would use for flat brushes or markers. In this case, that would be like a chisel marker. So there is control down here that's going to allow us to see how this works. And I'm just gonna come over here and first set this to none. And what I wanna do is I wanna point out to you again, the long, thin shape here. So if I pull straight down, what you're gonna see is I see that thin part of that shape. And if I pull side to side, I get the thick part of that shape. And if I go diagonal, I'm somewhere in between those two extremes. So again, you can see that it's very rigid. I really can't do anything. And as a matter of fact, you can see that that line that was in the middle of my brush ghost is gone. And all I have is the circle. So I'm gonna come over here and clear this. The next one down is follow trajectory. And this is very much like follow stroke was within Rebel 2. And this was the best that you could do in Rebel 2. But the idea here is that the direction in which we're stroking is going to always be getting the fat side of that. So it's basically automatically rotating this shape so that the direction that I'm stroking in is constantly being exposed, the fat side of this particular shape. And this was better than having none, but it wasn't really all that good. So in Rebel 3, we have two new options, which is going to be pen tilt and pen rotation. Now, if I come over here and I choose pen tilt, and I go ahead and I clear this guy off, you're gonna see that I'm gonna get a little bit more stability here with that line in the center of my brush ghost. And what it's tracking is the direction in which I'm pointing as I'm tilting my Wacom stylus. Now, if you're not using a Wacom, that's fine, so long as you have something that has tilt sensitivity. If you don't have something that has tilt sensitivity in the stylus, then you're not gonna be able to take advantage of this feature. So you definitely wanna make sure you have the right hardware. If you're using a Wacom brand device, then what you need is either the Intuos Pro or the Cintiq. And again, this is the standard stylus that I'm using right now. What I can do is I can point this in a direction as I'm tilting, and as I'm tilting, that direction that I'm pointing is gonna control the angle. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point slightly down towards the left, and I'm gonna go ahead and begin to drag, and you can see I can get the fat side, but as soon as I change directions, it's paying attention to the direction in which I'm tilting, and you can see that that direction that I'm pointing as I'm tilting is allowing me to get a very expressive type of stroke. This is much, much better than what we had with the follow trajectory. So I'm gonna come over here and clear this out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and look at the next option down, which is going to be pen rotation. So I'm gonna go ahead and change out to a Wacom art pen. So now that I have my Wacom art pen in my hand, you're gonna see that there's even more stability to that line that's in the center of my brush ghost. You can see, that it's only very slightly rotating. The reason why is because I'm rotating the Wacom art pen in my fingers. Now, again, this is a separate purchase that you would need on top of an Intuos Pro or a Cintiq. However, this is gonna give you the most naturalistic feeling of expressive control over these types of long, thin shapes. Like I said, you would use them for flat brushes or markers or various different types of brushes that you might want to have this type of control over. And the art pen is the optimal choice because you can use this rotation. So let me just go ahead and show you how this works. So you can see that it's a little bit like what we got with the pen tilt, but it feels a lot more controllable. I have a lot more control. It feels a lot more stable. There's a lot less effort on my part in order to be able to precisely control the rotation. So if you have a Wacom art pen, make sure that you set your old brushes to use the pen rotation. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set down the art pen and I wanna show you something important. So now that I'm back to using my regular stylus, you can see that there's that little bit of shakiness that's in that line in the center because it isn't really responding as smoothly as the art pen does when it comes to controlling the angle via the point of my tilt. But what I wanna point out to you is that even though I'm using the rotation of pen rotation, 
it knows that I'm not currently using a device that has rotation. So what it's doing is it's automatically dumbing this down to the next option down so that I'll be able to still control the angle using the lesser option. So I'm gonna be able to go ahead and make marks like this. Even though I'm not using pen rotation, I'm not using a device that supports pen rotation, meaning that I'm using a regular Wacom stylus, I still have pen tilt support. And so this works just fine as far as controlling it via the pen tilt. So when you're creating new brushes, my advice would be to always set the rotation here to pen rotation. This way, no matter what tool you're using, whether it be an art pen, or whether it be a regular stylus that has tilt sensitivity, or even a stylus that doesn't have tilt sensitivity, you'll always get the best possible option here for controlling this type of angle that you need for a long, thin shape. Now, of course, obviously for a round type of dab, meaning something where you don't have any kind of distinct shape to the shape here, then obviously none would be the one that you would wanna choose. And the reason why is because the rendering of your brush strokes will happen a lot quicker because it doesn't have to calculate the extra information of constantly changing the angle based on either pen rotation, pen tilt, or follow trajectory. So those are your options. Like I said, it's my favorite new feature of Rebel 3. I hope that you will get a lot of use out of it, assuming that you have the appropriate hardware to make use of these new rotation options. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at a different part of the brush engine in the next video.